muy especial porque definitivamente es una oportunidad para poder hacer un vínculo con, con una parte de Montessori que, que se ha venido desarrollando y que tiene que ver con los deportes y, y que definitivamente eh, seamos el, el, el colegio que va a ser modelo en toda América del Sur es eh, de verdad una, una de las oportunidades de crecimiento y de mejora para nuestra escuela, para, para nosotros como comunidad de Sori y, y bueno, quiero darles eh, las gracias por estar y pasar, eh, darle la bienvenida a Mechi, a Patri, Mercedes, pero no oh. queremos tanto que le decimos Mechi. Eh, a todas las familias eh, de, de nuestra comunidad Norwich, a nuestros eh, docentes que, están, que tienen ganas de estar acá, que están eh, trabajando con nosotros para que esto realmente se ve, sea visible y por supuesto a todas las personas de la comunidad de Montessori que nos acompañan presencialmente y también en, en online, que seguramente son un montón, bienvenidos todos. Eh, les cuento un poquito sobre Mechi. Mercedes es eh, especialista en transformación sistemática y realizó un gran trabajo en la Secretaría de Innovación y Calidad Educativa de la Nación. Es amiga de la casa y por supuesto nos acompaña en todos nuestros procesos de transformación. Eh, Papi. <risa> eh, Patrick es cofundador de Montessori Sports y ex representante de Sport Football en China. Eh, I'm going to switch to English. Eh, I want to eh, give you this eh, biggest hello and thank you for being here. And I pass the microphone to Mitch and we can start. Hello, welcome, Patrick. Latin America and to Argentina. Uh, also, I send a very huge hug to my friend Co, also founder of Montessori Sports, Ruben Yonke. Uh, thank you for creating Montessori Sports. And to start, I would love to ask you how did this start? Why Montessori Sports? Well, then I have to go back uh, around 10 years. Together with Ruben, uh, I met him there, and he started uh, to be my mentor first. And later, ten years later, we are now founding Montessori Sports uh, together. But how the idea came up is basically that we encountered a football player in the academy, and he was really mature. He was uh, really good at self. Management, self-reflection. Um, so we took a, a, a closer look. We got in touch with his family. Uh, and we spoke with his mother, and his mother is uh, Lynn Lawrence, the CEO of Ami. Um, so this basically started a conversation about how to combine sports and Montessori because we were searching for an educational philosophy that fits our ideas of uh, developing top talent in football. So this is how it started 10 years ago. This conversation was going on and on and on. Uh, in the end, we left uh, the IS Academy in 2016, uh, where in 2017, we started the initiative of Montessori Sports. Um, one of the most important things is why we started this is also we, we saw that there's a, a demand for children to uh, explore sports already from a very young age. So you can start with two or three year olds already, a very playful way uh, to ex explore sports. We saw that there wasn't paid a lot of attention within the current Montessori curriculum. So we saw there's a, an opportunity there uh, for children. Uh, to enrich the learning environment. That's also our basic, uh, our most important mission. Um, and how did, you, how did you realize that Montessori Sports Club was firstly like meeting football players, young football players? How did you switch 
back to Montessori sports for schools, where the traditional way of teaching sports or physical education is exactly the same for hundred years. Yeah. So I think this is very not only training kids to become the best football players or the best elite players, mm -hmm. those who are in Asia yes. or in any other important uh, football club. I think that the most important thing here is how did you realize that this was necessary for schools? Well, uh, for the first I have to go back to IX again because we started implementing Montessori principles within the IX Academy. Um, and I have to say, honestly, this wasn't 100%, it was maybe, maybe 50%, something like that. So we didn't reach the full potential, but we, we saw by implementing those principles what the result can be in, in this environment, in, a, in, a, in an elite environment. And so we started with mixing ages, we started by putting the, the child center and not the adult. So this is happening a lot of uh, times in, in uh, traditional education, but also in traditional sports education, is that it's about the adult, and he is instructing, he is telling children what to do, and we want to put the child in charge. Uh, so this requires a different role of the adult. Uh, and what we encountered is then, um, actually we didn't have the right people, uh, because they were used to the traditional way. But we saw that the right people, they are there, but they are in Montessori schools. Because if, uh, if yeah, according to us, the Montessori guy, the Montessori educated teacher, is an expert in following the child. And the only thing we do is we show how can you provide a sports environment for children in the different planes of development. So from 0 to 6, 6 to 12, 12 to 18, uh, 18 to 24, so... Um, because uh, I have done the course, so mm -hmm. and Patrick is be my teacher. Um, there is something very, very important also in Montessori sports, as well as inside the Montessori classrooms, where the environment is really prepared for what you need, that kids start doing or learning, uh, within the session, how, do you, how is it that it's very different from a traditional physical education lesson mm -hmm. or a sports lesson with Montessori sports lesson? Um, we believe that the Montessori guy himself, especially within the age group of 3 to 6, uh, so when the children are starting to um, explore different sports already, uh, the Montessori guide can be the sports teacher. So, because they are expert in the child, in the child it should be integrated, you know? And, and what we often see in schools is that there's then um, the physical education is then isolated. There's a, an expert from outside coming into school, doing stuff for children, but there, there are not according to the Montessori principles. So there are mixed messages for the child then, because suddenly it has to follow the instructions of the teacher. While within the classroom, uh, there is a freedom of choice. There are these principles present uh, that are not there in physical education. And that's because there is no integration between the two. And we see a big opportunity to say, okay, actually the sports environment is an extension of the indoor environment. Because it's really interesting to see the behavior and to observe the behavior of children indoor but also outdoor when playing sports. Maybe there's a lot of different behavior uh, you can observe. So it's really valuable as a teacher and to observe everything. Uh, there are many Montessori schools and other pedagogies that believe that within sports the students will become the kids will become very competitive and mm -hmm. there is no correct because they are too young to be yes. competitive. I would love to listen what do you think is uh, how do you understand competition 
bring up as a response? Uh, well, the most important thing is that we prepare children to become uh, happy, healthy humans for society. Now, if we look at society, competition is part of it, or uh, let's say uh, a success and failure. It's part of life. And this is also what Montessori mentioned, is, is uh, just how to deal with those things. You, need, you can learn it through sports. And of course the focus as an adult, as an, uh, and that's often where it goes wrong, because in traditional education, uh, sports education, it's about the result of the match. So it's getting really important to win or something. But we value more like how to cope with success. What can teach you, uh, what can, uh, can you learn, um, what kind of skills can you learn from that experience, which you can later learn uh, use in life. Um, I mean, if you want to, uh, for example, uh, if you want to find a partner, yeah, it's not a uh, one shot uh, and it's a success. Maybe you need to go through some failure uh, to get success later. But how to deal with failure is very important in life. Absolutely. I, I also find it uh, very uh, useful and it's a huge necessity among the educational systems in the, the emotional education. Yeah. And I believe that everybody is talking about emotional education and 21st century skills and all the skills that the, the kids will need in the future, they need it today. Yes. You don't have to wait for the future. They no. have every single day. And also, moreover, for those kids who are preparing to become elite players, elite football players. So, on the Sony Sports brings all these things together. There isn't any item, there isn't any other uh, area of development more important than sports to provide kids with these competencies, skills, emotional skills, because most of the time, the times the teachers say, how am I going to teach skills if I have to teach the content, the knowledge content? Yeah. There is like a disruption there, and no, that conversation has no sense, because it's impossible to teach any kind of skill or competence of, sorry, knowledge curriculum without teaching uh, the ability or the skill. And sports is a natural teacher for all those things. So on the same sports brings in the, the space, all these things, the content, the knowledge, the yes. skills, the values, that what you were saying is so important. Competition is not bad. Oh. Competition is part of our life and if you know to commit mistakes, if you don't fail, you are not really learning. Oh. So sports is amazing for that because kids want to, to win all the time. Yeah. So not winning yeah. is the biggest teacher they can have. Yeah. Um, another question is, for example, any of the schools that are listening to you today right now, maybe they are in the school, yeah. and they would love to have a Montessori sports, because a physical education teacher has been trained in a traditional system. Yeah. How is it that it works if they call Montessori sports, I want to start doing this? What's the focus? Where do you start? With the teachers, with the principals, with the school? How does it work? Well, what, what we find important, is that there are going to be, uh, it can start anywhere basically. So it's, it's like a seed we want to plant. But in the end, what we find important within schools is that there is support from the top. So from the management or the, the principals. Uh, because sport is something you need to uh, make part of your school culture. So this cannot be just one person who's doing sports. No, it needs to be embraced by the whole school. And it starts with the top. But of course, it doesn't always work like uh, maybe the, the management or whatever needs to be convinced by one teacher. Like, hey, this is, uh, I'm doing this course now. Uh, so it can work uh, multiple ways. But in the end, the, the critical success factor is to have support from, yeah, from the top of the school because it's part of the whole uh, culture of the school. And what would 
uh, on the solid sport environment inside the school would look like? Um, well, um, I have to say it, the basic principles of how to apply sports can be done anywhere, but, but the only thing is we basically uh, let teachers think about how to prepare the environment um, and what is necessary. So often I get this question like, okay, I want to do sports, but then I need to have a full-size pitch, a football pitch or a sports uh, area. It's not always necessary. Sometimes in a small space and even indoor, for example, the room we are now, can perfectly be used for sports. Uh, but you need to think more differently about the environment. Um, and what if it's, uh, I, I want to get to the point of the, the change of the mindset in me to be a professional sports teacher, mm -hmm. as well as a coach in football. I can yes. imagine yes. the coaches looking at you like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And used to get to, to be with 30 or 20 or 40 kids, and I am the only one in, 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 in telling them yes. how to do it. And that is a very big change because what you propose, what Professor Sports proposes, uh, guided and very, very care environments. Mm -hmm. So when a school starts this, you really have to work very close to the teachers. Yes. Because they really have to change their mindset. It's not going to be any longer one to twenty, no. but it's a one to one. Yeah. Um, how do you, or, or what's the most difficult part of doing this changing or this transformation uh, in the school? Do you need support from the school side to do the course? Yes, 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 yes. So we are uh, we open for schools. Uh, to consult them on an like, individual basis, to have a look at the environment, to have a look at uh, who are the teachers in the environment. Um, the most important advice I always, I always give to teachers is that you need to get comfortable by, with being uncomfortable in sports. Because it's, the, the environment is much more than anything. So you need to be aware, you can't control everything. You need to let go sometimes and just take a step back and observe. Because you, you get the most out of those moments. It helps you to reflect, like maybe I need to adjust the environment next time a little bit. Um, and I don't have to be in charge all the time. So step back and observe. Uh, and then make adjustments to the environment for the next time. So it's a, it's a process. We cannot expect like a, it's the same what we tell in the course. Uh, if you have done the course, that you are perfectly sports teacher according to Montessori principles. No, but it's a good start. Uh, and after maybe a month, you reflect, you improve yourself. So it's a continuous cycle. How difficult is for the educational systems or for the teachers just to stay and observe? The instinct is to say something uh, into that correct all the time. So, Maria Montessori, for me, one of them, among all the amazing things she gave me to, to, to the teaching uh, ecosystem is wait, yeah. listen, observe, yes. let the child flourish, yeah. and wait. Yeah. And maybe we are all the time trying to guide them mm -hmm. and telling them what to do. So, can you tell us um, from your experience what are the main characteristics or benefits in a student that has been doing or attending to a professional sports uh, model in, mm -hmm. in the school? Um, and then on the other side, as a, a student that hasn't been uh, in the yeah, that's, that's a, a nice thing about me being uh, present working in a elite football academy at the moment as well, but also involved in Montessori, so I can tell the difference. Uh, in the traditional system, 
the children are used to do what the teacher says. So they are not triggered to think for themselves. Well, actually this should be done already with six year olds. Six to twelve year olds, it's about letting them uh, think for themselves. But because we are so involved uh, in the traditional way, we are so involved in uh, being competitive, winning, we want control as a teacher, we don't let them think for themselves. And what happens as a result, yeah, is that there are, I think in terms of personality, they don't reach their full potential. And then they are, uh, in the end, I'm, yeah, I'm uh, doubting that they are becoming really happy human beings by going through the system in traditional sports education. If I look at Montessori sports, the way we want to teach it, uh, yeah, it's using sports to build personality. Because through sports, you can take different roles as part of a team or maybe individually. And if individual sports is perfect for personality building as well. You need to take leadership, you're developing self-confidence, autonomy, you need to take your own decisions. And those are really valuable skills that will help you through life. So that's, that's a different approach. And the result is, I think, uh, more happy, healthy human beings in the end that can contribute and that know their place in society. Because through sports, it's also interesting if you look at the 12 to 18 phase, they go through a phase like, who am I? And who am I in society? And what can I, in the end, when I'm 18, in the, the latest stage of development, how can I contribute to society again? And because they are, they are um, free to think about this, and through sports, I mean, uh, you can tell the similarities by the position in the field. So if I look at that, if I make a reference to football, uh, I'm sure there's a correlation between personality and your position on the field. If you're a goalkeeper, you have a different personality than if you're a striker. If you are a central defender, probably you want to have control. If you are uh, maybe a wing player, you, you need to be, um, how to say, you need, you, you need to be uh, intuitive. You need to surprise your opponent. So it, it reflects in your personality as well. And to let children think about this, it's really valuable. And, um so interesting what you are saying. I, I would like to ask you, why do you think there are so many teenagers when uh, they are age 17, 18, and um, they abandon their sport or they quit to get mm -hmm. a dream of being a professional or mm -hmm. in Argentina, for example, feel okay, there is another term, sport, but many, many girls just quit when they are Mm -hmm. also in football, yeah. why do you think this happens? Um, well, often, in general, what we see is that the environment in this uh, age group, because there's a huge biological uh, differences within the different ages, so if you have 12 to 18 or 12 to 15, it's really important things, because actually, in Montessori, we call it like, the child is reborn, it's like another birth, so a lot of uh, um, mental and physical developments take place in that phase. But some of 12 year old are already as mature as a 15 year old, and some of 15 year old uh, calendar age it is uh, still like late mature. So it maybe has the body and the physique of a uh, of 12 year old. So then the environment is not fair. So by going through this process, you see a lot of dropouts at the, uh, at the age of 16 or something. Because they experience it every time, they have the passion for a sport, but because they are encountered with an environment which is not fair, because the differences are too big, they lose interest, they lose fun, they lose the, the reason why they do it. Okay, Petra, the last one. Uh, to close, I would like to, to, to ask you, what would you say a school that is listening to you and you say, well, Tomet, the competition is not 
I'm bad, maybe mm -hmm. I can try. Mm -hmm. Why should they give you the opportunity to let them introduce some sports in their community? Uh, yeah, I would like to add another thing because I know I'm in the country of the new world champion in <laughs> football. Uh, so, well, congratulations. It was a nice match against Holland, unfortunately, we lost. But, uh, we are just a little bit. Yeah, it's just a little bit. It's kind of been a great time. No, but it's. Uh, but there, I have to say, there, there could be, I'm not saying that there is, but there could be danger in that. Because uh, football is so popular and you have success, uh, and a lot of teachers they might copy what they see on the TV. So they might copy the same approach uh, that is displayed on, on national television. The same with 3 to 6 or 6 to 12 year olds. Uh, and then you, you, as a result, what you see is that there's uh, an adult who is instructing all the time, you see the materials, they are not age appropriate, so they might be too big or too heavy. Um, so basically the environment is prepared in a way that it's not reaching the full potential for the children. Um, so there, there could be a danger in that. Um, and then now I need to get back to your question. Please Why are there any school that is watching this uh, conversation today? Yes. What would you tell them so that they uh, start knowing closer with the sports? Um, I would say, uh, of course, you can. You can and visit. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs>
Thank you, gracias. <laughs> I, I really, really, really enjoy it, so I...